Now we're going to talk about troubleshooting. Now if you happen to run into a problem with your carburetor, before you take it off and bring it back to where you purchased it, let's look at some of these issues and you might be able to fix it without having to take it back. Now number one problem that we run into sometimes is idling problems. And if you're having an idling problem where the air-fuel mixture screws right here, no matter which way you turn them, don't do anything, then it probably means that the idle circuit inside the carburetor is dirty. Now keep in mind, to sustain an idle on an engine takes very, very little fuel and air. It doesn't take much at all. And these are very small circuits inside here, so any little minor piece of dirt that gets in there can plug that off, and it's going to give you some idle problems. So an easy thing to do is just remove the air-fuel mixture screws. We'll take them both out, just one at a time. And here it is. You want to inspect it. Look for any dirt. There's nothing on there. We'll set that down. And just take just a common air gun with just a little air pressure. Go inside and just blow it out a little bit. Just like that. And you do the same thing to the other one. And that just, if there's any little minor dirt or fuzz or anything that got in there, it'll just blow it through the circuit. And then just reset this back in. And screw it all the way in. And don't cinch it, but when it stops down at the bottom, when it seats itself down, back it back about a turn and a half or so. There we go. And not, not hard, just, just, just seat it in. Back it back about a turn and a half. And do that to the other one too. Pull it out, blow some air in there, do the same thing, and then start the engine up. And then follow the procedure I told you earlier on how to adjust the airflow mixture screws, and the problem should be gone. Now another problem you can troubleshoot is say the engine runs fine, but you just can't get it to idle low enough. All right, well there's two th remedies for that. We can look in here. Here's the idle speed screw. Now by screwing it in, it increases the idle, and by screwing it out, it decreases the idle. And if that doesn't fix the problem, if you look up under here, there's another screw right down here. Now this is the high idle screw. And what that is, is while the choke is on, this is what sets the fast idle for when the choke is activated. When it's deactivated, this really shouldn't come into play. Another problem some people run into is erratic idles, like the engine idling high, then low, then high, sometimes with even a whistle sound to it. What that's indicating is a vacuum leak. And a quick, easy way to find a vacuum leak is fire the engine up and try and get it to idle as, as low as you can. Then just take some basic carburetor cleaner and do a couple of short bursts of squirting around the carburetor, just around the base plate area, just a, a quick squirt, and listen for the idle. What happens is if you're sucking in air, like say in the base plate, what will happen is this is volatile, so it will mix with the incoming air and actually increase the idle, and you'll hear a definite idle increase. So spray around, if you don't hear anything, wait a second, then come over here, give it a little spray. As the engine idles, if there's a vacuum leak right there, it'll suck this in and increase it by quite a bit. Then you know, aha, there it is, right there, and it'll give you an idea of an area to look for. Okay, let's say the engine idles fine and runs actually fine just sitting here. You can rev it up and no problems, but you take it out on a road and under a load it pops and sputters or just doesn't have the power or just can't get up and go. What that's usually indicating is a lean condition while under a load. And what you need to look for with something like this is a pinched off fuel line, like maybe down at the fuel pump. Because what happens is, the engine idling doesn't need much fuel and air to sustain an idle. But under a load going down the road, you're pulling off the main jets and you're flowing a lot more fuel and air through the motor. So what that could mean is, like I say, a, a pinched off fuel line. It could be dirt in one of the main jets of the carburetor. Uh, it could be a piece of fuel line. You might say, well, Aaron, everything's new that I put on here. A new fuel filter, I put everything new. Well, even inserting a new fuel filter sometimes can shave the inside of the hose and you get a little piece of rubber fuel line that goes on through and gets inside the carburetor and plugs off a main jet. So even though it's new, you could still have something in there. Another problem could be fuel pressure too low, uh, just inadequate. So under a load, you drain the float bowls down and then there's not enough replenishment in the carburetor to keep it going. So you want to check for things like that. A problem you can run into sometimes is smelling fuel, or actually seeing fuel around the carburetor, especially coming out areas up on top of the carburetor like this. These right here and this right over here are actually vents into the, into the float bowls. If fuel's coming out of here, or you can smell it, or you can see it around the carburetor, it's telling you there's a problem going on. And what that problem could be is dirt in the needle and seat. And what the needle and seat does is when the float level comes up and fills the float levels inside the carburetor, it actually shuts the fuel off. If you have dirt inside there, it can't shut it off, so the fuel pump just keeps pumping more and more fuel inside the carburetor. It has no place to go, so it comes out the top and gurgles all over the place. It's a real fire potential hazard, so you want to be sure that that, that problem gets fixed. Now another problem that could be is just the fuel pressure is too high. 
If you have too much fuel pressure, then what will happen is it will blow fuel right past that needle to seat. It's not strong enough to hold back the fuel pressure. So you never want any more than about seven pounds of pressure going into the carburetor. Uh, any more than that, it's a little excessive. Um, these carburetors will handle a little bit more than that, but you really don't need it. So six to seven PSI is pretty optimal for that. Now, if you know your fuel pressure is good and you know there's no dirt in a needle and seat, it could be just a simple float adjustment. And you can take the top of the carburetor off, flip it upside down, and actually check the float levels with a scale or with a, a drill bit, like a 7 16th drill bit. And that'll let you know if it's the, the correct height or not. Another problem you can run into sometimes is let's say the engine runs just fine normally, but you've got a little bit of a high and erratic idle, but not too bad, but just a little high erratic idle. And another symptom you find is when you're cruising down the road and just give it a little bit more throttle, you get a pinging sound. Now, what that's telling me is you probably have a vacuum advance, and chances are that vacuum advance is hooked up to the wrong vacuum port on the carburetor. And what I mean by that are most vacuum advances use ported or timed vacuum. And if you hook the, the vacuum advance up to manifold vacuum, it'll do exactly this. It'll pull too much advance at an idle because it's running off a manifold vacuum. And when you're cruising down the road and you give it just part throttle, it'll ping. So what we want to do is look at the vacuum ports down here. One is low and one is high. Now the lower one down here is manifold vacuum. An easy way to tell is fire the engine up and stick your finger on it. Manifold vacuum will suck your finger on it. Ported vacuum or timed vacuum really won't. There's almost no vacuum in an idle. Most vacuum advances use this side right here. Now a problem you can run into sometimes after you install a new carb or even a new intake manifold is the engine running really, really high, idling high, and you can't get it to idle down without it stalling and dying out on you. Now usually what that means is you left the plug out of the back side of the carburetor that we usually use for like power brake port or something like that. Also sometimes in the intake manifold, if you put a new one on, if you didn't put a plug in there, you have a direct open vacuum port right there. And what that'll do is also cause it to idle really, really high. And no matter what you do, as soon as you start getting it to idle down a little bit, it stalls the engine. So look around the back side of the carb, look around the intake manifold for plugs that are left out or anything like that, and it'll probably solve the problem. Okay, let's say you just installed a carburetor, and now you're having trouble with your automatic transmission shifting. Like it doesn't want to shift until it hits a real high RPM, or when it does shift, it's bam, real hard. What that's telling you is either the vacuum line going down to the modulator valve on a transmission is either pinched, or it's split, or it's not plugged into the proper port on the carburetor here. So you want to be sure is that that is having manifold vacuum. If we look at the carburetor, that's this port on this side right here. It's the lower port that sits lower on the carburetor. This one's slightly higher, this one's slightly lower. And again, if you stick your finger over it, it should suck your finger on there. That's the one that should go down to the transmission. If it's hooked up to that, your transmission should shift properly. Now the problem some people run into sometimes, they put a brand new carburetor on and it runs great for a few days. Then all of a sudden it really starts running bad. Now usually the culprit behind that is someone didn't install a fuel filter. The reason this takes a couple of days to do is you've got microscopic particles in the fuel tank, you've got them in the fuel lines, you've got them in the fuel pump, and it takes a couple of days for these little particles to start accumulating and work their way inside the carburetor. Then once they get in the carburetor, it takes a couple of days to start accumulating and filling up the main jets, and pretty soon you clog one up, and then the carburetor doesn't run very good. So if you install a fuel filter, which is very important to do, you should eliminate problems like this. Now some people can run into problems on large cubic inch engines where you're driving down a road and you give it the throttle and you have a hesitation. Okay, only when you first give it the throttle. Now what that usually is, is the accelerator pump. And that's located right inside the carburetor here. And what that is, that's a plunger. So every time you give it the throttle, you'll see this linkage move. And what that does is that squirts fuel inside the carburetor. That's an initial squirt of fuel before the main jets work. Well, there's some adjustments on the linkage right here, so you can make it you have a bigger squirt or a smaller squirt. Well on larger cubic inch engines you need a bigger squirt of fuel and a smaller cubic inch engine you need a smaller squirt of fuel. But what this will do when this is not working properly is it'll run fine cruising but when you first get it throttle uh, and you have a hesitation. And what that first little hesitation is is usually the accelerator pump. So you want to check that right there. A problem you can run into sometimes is what's called an off idle surge. And what that means is right as you come off of an idle and you're starting to go or you're cruising along just barely over an idle, the car wants to surge a little bit. Now usually that means on the idle mixture screws you're a little on the lean side or possibly a little on the rich side. So you can go back and readjust those just a little richer or a little leaner and that should make the problem go away. 